Hi everyone, welcome to this lecture on policy inheritance attachment for compartments and what happens to the policies when resources are moved or compartments are moved. My name is uh, Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. So there are two important concepts which you need to understand uh, when creating policies uh, and we discussed earlier that policies uh, have to be attached uh, to compartments. So there are two important concepts there. So one is the policy inheritance. And what it simply states is compartments inherit any policies from their parent compartment. So for example, we saw this earlier, uh, OCI has a built-in policy for administrators, which says allow group administrators to manage all resources in tenancy. And again, if you recall from the previous module on uh, just on IAM policies, uh, manage is the highest level of verb, which is, uh, which is available and all resources mean uh, admins can manage uh, everything in, in OCI tenancy is basically the account. So due to the policy inheritance, the administrators group and, and users within that group can also do anything in any of the compartments in the tenancy. In my previous example in the demo, you saw my tenancy had 15 compartments and the users as part of the administrators group could actually uh, manage resources in any of those compartments because of this concept of inheritance. Now let's look at an example. Let's say we have uh, the root compartment, which is again, as we discussed, is the parent for all the other compartments in a tenancy. And there are three other compartments, A, B, and C. So policies that applies to resources in compartment A also apply to resources in compartments B and C. So what it means is if you write a policy which says allow network group network admins to manage virtual network family in compartment A, basically that also allows the group network admins to manage uh, networks in compartments B and C. So you don't have to specifically write uh, policies specifically for compartments B and C because they are inheriting policies from their uh, parent uh, compartment. Now the second important concept you need to un understand is the concept of attachment. Uh, when you create a policy, you must attach it to a compartment or for that matter to the root compartment tenancy. Where you attach it is really important because that controls who can modify it or delete it. So for example, if you attach it to the tenancy, also the root compartment, then anyone who has access to manage policies in the tenancy like administrators can change or delete it. But if you attach it to a child compartment, so here if it's in compartment A, B or C, then anyone with access to manage the policies in that specific compartment, you can also define compartment admins, for example, can change or delete it. So you can have compartment A admins here, you can have compartment B admins here, etc etc right and you can define your you can attach your policies to these different compartments and you can have different policies uh, for uh, for each of these admins now let's look at an example so let's say you want to create a policy to allow network admins to manage networks in compartment c right here so you could attach the policy either here or you could attach policy here and you could write a policy like this right uh, group allow uh, uh, network admins to manage virtual network family in compartment C. So you could definitely write it here. You could also write in, in B and because of inheritance, the policy will apply to, uh, to, to VCNs in compartment C, right? But if you want to write this policy in compartment A, how would you do that? Uh, because compartment A has no, it is part of a tree, but it really doesn't know where C exists, right? So the way you would do that is you would say allow group network admins to manage virtual network family in compartment and right here you would provide a path B colon C. So if you do B colon C and you do this, this uh, you, you write the, you, 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 you can put the, the policy right here. If you don't do this, then A has no in idea of where the C compartment is and it would not be able to, uh, if you do that, the, the system will give you an error saying that this policy could not be attached to compartment A. Now, let's get very, let's get a bit clear on this. Uh, if you write a policy here, 
uh, only compartment A admins can modify it. Compartment B admins and compartment C admins might not be able to, to modify it. Mm, and network admins can still only manage networks in compartment C because your policy says B colon C, so it's going all the way to, 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 to compartment C. In the same example, if you want to uh, do to attach this policy, you want to keep things simpler uh, in in the in the root compartment tenancy. You will have to give the full path. So it's a colon b colon c, right? And so that way you have a complete path, and you could attach this policy right here at, at in the in in the root compartment. Now what happens when you move a compartment to a different parent compartment? There are such certain restrictions. Uh, you can do this. Uh, when you move a compartment, all its content, including the sub -com compartment and resources, are moved with it. Now there are a couple of restrictions. You cannot move a compartment to a destination compartment with the same name as the compartment being moved. So the compartment B here cannot be moved here because it shares the name with the parent here. So it cannot be possible. Two compartments within the same parent cannot have the same name. So for example, if there was a compartment C here, and let's say there was a compartment C here, you could not move C right here because then this and this would have the same name. So there's a couple of restrictions you have to uh, keep in mind. So let's look at a couple of examples on policy implications when moving compartment. Now this is really important because this comes up in on the exams, uh, several exams we have. So let's look at this um, 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 really quickly. So policies that specify the compartment hierarchy down to the compartment being moved, so this is first condition which has to be true, will automatically be updated when the policy is attached to a shared ancestor of the current and target parent. So this is the second condition which has to be true, right? So let's look at an example. So in this case, the compartment which is being moved is compartment A, right? Now the policy has to specify the compartment hierarchy, which we saw earlier slide on the earlier slide down to the compartment being moved. So you have to write a policy like this uh, in, in the hierarchy test colon A, right? So this is going all the way to, to this to, to the compartment being moved. Now where is this policy being defined? It's being defined at a shared ancestor. So in this case, ops is a shared ancestor. This compartment A has to be moved here. So ops is a shared ancestor of both test and dev. So the second condition is met. And the first condition says the compartment hierarchy is down to the compartment being moved. So test colon A is this compartment is being moved. So if you do this, right, and you write a policy right here, then the policy automatically changes right here and it gets updated to dev colon A. And pol policy is automatically uh, updated. And this group G1 doesn't lose its permissions. Now let's look at another example. In this case, my shared ancestor is the root, which is which is definitely you know possible because root is sort of the shared ancestor for um, <clears throat> for all the other compartments within the tenancy. Now in this case, you write a policy here, like the previous uh, example, but you only give the path from ops to test. So if you do this, right? There's a there's ops to test. The second condition, shared ancestor, is met. Both of them are shared ancestor, so that's good. But the first condition says that the compartment being moved, you have to write the policy down to that, give the whole hierarchy. In this case, are we doing that? We are going from ops to test, but not to call, not to not to compartment A here. So if you do this, and there is a policy you define on this group G1, G1 loses that policy when the compartment is being moved because the, it has no idea where this compartment A, the tree, the path, the hierarchy path, where it is, right? But in this case, if you had done ops colon test colon A, it would have, and you did the move, it would have changed it to ops dev colon A as in the previous example because there is a shared ancestor and if you had specified this right here, it would have done that. So it's again a little bit tricky. Just have to make sure that you understand the concept 
the compartment being moved you have to give the whole hierarchy path otherwise the policies doesn't get impact no, doesn't get uh, updated now there's another thing which you have to keep in mind is if you write a policy and attach it directly to a compartment moved uh, getting moved that policy is not automatically updated so we write a policy here on the test compartment and it's a parent so this a inherits from from test and you do this right here uh, on on the test uh, the policy is not automatically updated and becomes invalid um, because it's directly attached to the uh, to the to the uh, to the compartment. Thank you for joining uh, this lecture on policy inheritance and uh, attachment. Uh, if you have time, join the next lecture where we talk about tax. Thank you.